November 11, 1911, the Bayonne Herald, Bayonne, New Jersey. Thanksgiving decorations. Even with money to burn, the most appropriate Thanksgiving decorations are those that can largely be had for the gathering. Autumn leaves, festoons of ears of corn, their husks turned back and braided together, cockle burr basket that the children can make and fill with sprays of bittersweet, barberries or mountain ash, strings of horse chestnuts glossy and brown, intermingled with ropes of yellow kernels of corn or popcorn, and red Virginia creeper make beautiful decorations, as do also cattails and groups of bell peppers in all stages of ripeness, from deep shining green to flaming scarlet. For a centerpiece, a popular design consists of a large yellow pumpkin or bronze green Hubbard squash, the stem end cut off, the contents scooped out, and the edges cut in fancy shape, or finished as a basket with handles and filled with rosy-cheeked apples, purple grapes, golden oranges, ruddy pears with sprays of autumn leaves, and green or crimsoning vines trailing gracefully over the outside. A tall crystal vase with a bunch of fluffy yellow chrysanthemums makes a beautiful centerpiece, especially when standing on a copper tray or one of the reflectors now so popular for up-to-date table decorations. For Thanksgiving favors, let the children make toy animals from potatoes, lemons, gourds, beets, and nuts, with twigs or toothpicks for legs. Strange indeed are the little beasties that can be thus cunningly contrived. Indian baskets are also appropriate furnishings for the Thanksgiving table, utilizing them for passing fruit, nuts, or popcorn. November 18, 1911, the Bayonne Herald Bayonne, New Jersey, the Colonial Tea. Thanksgiving fun connected with feast of other days. Guests quaintly gowned. Refreshment table set forth in the style of the festive board in Martha Washington's time. The newest favors for children's parties. A charming way to connect the Thanksgiving entertainment of the present with the feast of abundance in the days of our forefathers is a Colonial Tea. The invitations for a colonial festivity are written on single sheets of pale paper, which are afterward folded as in the days before envelopes were invented and sealed with colored wax or red wafers. Tie each with blue baby ribbon and enclose in conventional envelopes for sending by post. The wording might be quaintly in keeping with the occasion as follows. Ye and yours are most kindly bidden to a high tea at ye house of Master and Mistress Jones, on Thursday evening, November ye 30, from nine of ye clock till midnight, where, if possible, ye dress of ye forefathers. Colonial dress is not hard to plan, nor need it be expensive. Illustrations abound in all public libraries, both in illustrated novels of colonial setting and in works on costume. All styles of pre-revolutionary dress are allowable, from the severe russet or drab of the New England settler to the silks, hoop skirts, and panniers of the southern colonists. Buff and blue cheesecloth, or the tissue paper substitute, make an effective decoration for the room and one easy arrangement. Cut from magazines any picture of colonial folk which you can discover. Tint with watercolor and frame with paper in the shape of medallions. These can be used to finish off the buff and blue festoons with great success. Flank the corners of the room with dried corn, interspersed with autumn flowers. In the center of the room, arranged are corn stalks or dried leaves. Have a pile of fruit, the foundation pumpkins and squash, and gradually ascending to the smaller fruit, pears, rosy apples, and grapes. Figures in the form of vegetable arrangements may be made of crepe paper as shown in the illustrations, one of which represents a pumpkin boy and the other a little corn maiden. The refreshment table in an adjoining room is set forth in the style of a festive board in Martha Washington's time. That is, first of all, the smooth, pearly damask. At either end have a tall apern of the style which many American families still boast, with four graduated tiers. In the tiny dish at the top place bonbons, just below raisins and nuts, third cakes, fourth fruit. 
be sure to have bunches of grapes alternating in color drooping over the lower edge of this tier. Use white china or white with narrow band of gilt or green, or an imitation of the blue willow wear if possible. November 29, 1911. The Pittsburgh Press, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Unfortunates will have reason to give thanks. Inmates of penitentiary, workhouse and jail to have special privileges tomorrow. Inmates of various penal institutions, hospitals, etc. in Greater Pittsburgh will be given the opportunity to observe Thanksgiving Day tomorrow. Probably the most elaborate plans will be carried out by the convicts at the Western Penitentiary at Riverside. The 998 occupants of the institution have been afforded considerable latitude for offering up thanks by Warden John Francis. Inside the big stone walls, there will be a general deviation from the usual routine of prison life. After partaking of a breakfast of cornmeal mush with milk, bread, syrup, and coffee with milk, the prisoners will repair to the chapel where an entertainment for which they have been rehearsing for weeks will be given. In order to permit all the inmates to view the show, which will consist of vaudeville stunts and which will be strictly home talent, the show will have to be put on in relays. The performance will commence at 8.30 in the morning and will require most of the day. The penitentiary orchestra will supply the music. Chaplain Miller has not neglected the women inmates and has secured three professional women performers from the outside who will furnish entertainment in the women's department starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. All entertainments will be exclusive as outsiders will be barred. Following the entertainment, an elaborate Thanksgiving dinner will be served to all the inmates and will consist of pork chops, baked sweet potatoes, cranberry sauce, celery, apple pie, syrup, bread and butter, and coffee with milk. In the evening, a supper consisting of oyster stew with crackers, pickles, bread and butter, and tea with milk will be served. Toby's will also be furnished to smokers. At the Allegheny County Workhouse, Werner Station, Superintendent A. H. Leslie will grant a general cessation from work. A good dinner and special privileges will be offered. The 743 inmates at the works, some of whom are spending their first Thanksgiving at the Big Farm, will not fare badly. All will attend the special service which will be conducted in the prison chapel in the morning by Reverend Montgomery of the Oakmont Presbyterian Church. After the services, a special dinner consisting of roast beef, mashed potatoes, celery, cranberry sauce, pie, bread and butter, and coffee with milk will be served. There will be no French chef engaged by the Allegheny County authorities to prepare a special meal for the Thanksgiving dinner of the prisoners in the Allegheny County Jail. The 400 prisoners now confined behind the massive walls will be cared for by their friends who will be permitted to send them baskets containing the good things of the Thanksgiving season. This will be the only deviation from the regular routine of prison life. In former years, the prisoners have always been bountifully remembered by their friends at this season, and it is not probable that this year will prove an exception. There will be no Thanksgiving services held in the jail. A real Thanksgiving dinner with turkey, cranberries, celery, and the many other good things which accompany it will gladden the hearts of the youngsters, 12 boys and 5 girls, now in the detention rooms of the juvenile court.